She loves the Merritt Parkway. Oh, yeah. Well, the other reason why I find it difficult to read the Merritt Parkway is because there is a, a factual error in it. It was written at a time when I was unfamiliar with the <laughs> American highway system, and it says that the Merritt Parkway has six lanes, which it really doesn't have, at least... Um, I mean, what people think of as the Merritt Parkway is certainly doesn't have six lanes. I suppose there's an extension of it or something, which I was told we were on. But um, it was my first experience of driving around on big highways. Yeah, yeah, it was. Driving back from New England uh, on the Labor Day weekend <laughs> in a very old car. Who's tapped by mistake? We didn't know it was Labor Day weekend. No. And the, it had very old tires and was about to, all of which were about to explode at any moment, and it was rather frightening. <laughs> um, Merritt Parkway. They were lying on the back. Yeah, he was lying on the back window. <laughs> Do you remember it? Can you remember it? You were four, I think. Um, Merritt Parkway. As if it were forever that they move, that we keep moving under a one sky where as the lights went on a star pierced the haze and now follows steadily a constant above our six, la six lanes the dreamlike continuum and the people ourselves the humans from inside the cars apparent only at gasoline stops unsure eyeing each other drink coffee hastily at the slot machines and hurry back to the cars, vanish into them forever to keep moving, houses now and then beyond the sealed road, the trees, trees, bushes passing by, passing the cars that keep moving ahead of us, past us, pressing behind us, and over left, those that come toward us, shining too brightly, moving relentlessly in six lanes, gliding north and south, speeding with a slurred sound. Um, and uh, speaking of this thing of finding in one's own poems the connections that one didn't realize were there, I see that in eyeing each other, there's a pickup on the people in the subway that I, the blind man, in the poem called A Solitude, which I'd like to read if you, uh, it's, it's a poem that I like. And the book opens right to that page, <laughs> strangely. <laughs> well, I went to that garbage truck that goes by, or whatever that is. <laughs> a water truck or something. Um, this poem is called A Solitude. It's a poem of the New York subway. A blind man. I can stare at him, ashamed, shameless. Or does he know it? No, he is in a great solitude. Oh, strange joy to gaze my fill at a stranger's face. No, my thirst is greater than before. In his world, he is speaking almost aloud. His lips move. Anxiety plays about them. And now joy of some sort trembles into a smile. A breeze I can't feel crosses that face as if it crossed water. The train moves uptown, pulls in and pulls out of the local stops. Within its loud, jarring movement, a quiet the quiet of people not speaking, some of them eyeing the blind man. Only a moment, though, not thirsty like me. And within that quiet, his different quiet, not quiet at all, a tumult of images. But what are his images? He's blind. He doesn't care that he looks strange, showing his thoughts on his face like designs of light flickering on water, for he doesn't know what look is. I see he has never seen. And now he rises, he stands at the door ready, knowing his station is next. Was he counting? No, 
that was not his need. When he gets out, I get out. Can I help you toward the exit? Oh, all right. An indifference. But instantly, even as he speaks, even as I hear indifference, his hand goes out, waiting for me to take it. And now we hold hands like children. His hand is warm and not sweaty, the grip firm, it feels good. And when we have passed through the turnstile, he going first, his hand at once waits for mine again. Here are the steps, and here we turn to the right. More stairs now. We go up into sunlight. He feels that, the soft air. A nice day, isn't it, says the blind man. Solitude walks with me, walks beside me. He is not with me. He continues his thoughts alone. But his hand and mine know one another. It's as if my hand were gone forth on its own journey. I see him across the street the blind man. And now he says he can find his way. He knows where he is going. It is nowhere. It is filled with presences. He says, I am. I'll just stand back here and play for a while. Yeah. <laughs>